Hey everyone, so uh, in this video we're going to rebuild my wind turbine. Um, my first version of it I made before I even had this bit of land, so a long time ago. And it was built for a 12 volt system and this is 24 volts so it spanned too fast, it didn't work right. Um, so now I know what I'm doing with it and I have all these lovely tools at my disposal, we're going to rebuild it and we're going to do a proper job of it, make it much higher voltage, suited to the system and we're going to make a control system for it as well. So uh, yeah, I've been working on it now for about six months on and off and uh, it's finally finished. So uh, let's get to work and rebuild a wind turbine. I'm, uh, winding coils. So I made this little coil, wind coil winder, it's just out of uh, plywood. So this wind turbine is going to be quite big and it's got uh, 12 coils of 150 turns of wire. And it's also chunky wire, I can't remember the exact size, I worked all that a while ago. Yeah, basically it's going to be a monster. <coughs> um, and I've got big magnets, so that's why the hole in the middle is so large. And everything interacts with each other, so if you've got big magnets you need to have a big hole in the centre of the coils and if you've got a big hole in the centre of the coils then the outside of the uh, coil is going to be big so then the rotor gets big uh, because it's all got big, the distance between the magnets, the air gap gets bigger so the voltage drops and you need more turns to account for that or more coils and then it gets bigger and everything just is a trade off with everything else as it, as it is with these things often. Yeah, just uh, winding the coil, so I'll get one wound with you. So just do it like that, out of the way. You start out trying to keep these all in line and all perfect and back and forward and over itself, but it just doesn't work. <laughs> so I'll just give up in the end, it all gets cast in resin anyway. Just wind it on there basically. <laughs> just trying to keep an even tension. Yeah, 150 turns. So they get pretty big, about 30 metres of wire I think in each one. Right, once that's done, we've got to poke the other end out. And then we want to get a bit of tape through here to hold it. While we do it. Put a bit of tape through there. Tape goes round. A little piece of wood that's uh, wedge shaped wood so I don't hurt the coils. Just work that off of there. There we go. Now I'll uh, put this one with the others. As you can see, it's going to be quite big. So that would be red, earth colour whatever that is, green, so red, earth colour, green, red, earth colour, green, red, earth colour, green, red, earth colour, green, yeah, so it's going to be like that big, the stator, it's a beast. Right, now we've got our coils wound, I'm just working on making a um, template, like a jig for uh, the coils, to cast the coils in resin. This video will get too long if I go through everything in absolute detail, so we're just going to show a rough outline of it.
Right, so I've uh, got my 3D printed uh, divided, well, magnet um, template, I suppose. The magnets are actually going to sit in here, but I can use this to check that my coils are lined up. So, and I'm still printing another one, but it looks like it's going to line up because that's central to that. So, yeah, see, we're lined up there on that colour, there on that colour, there on that colour, and we will be there. And then when it rotates round, to say the earth colours there, so it's rotated so it lines up with them, so it's like, it's hard to do, right so that one's a tiny little bit out, so we just rotate it around, so just go around like that, checking them, just check that it lines up with four at a time. Wired up, here's my terminals, three phases, four coils in each phase, so the power or the root of electricity it's from phase one, the red goes around the coil from the outside to the inside and that comes around here from the outside to the inside that comes around here from the outside to the inside and it comes around and then the outside to the inside and then it joins up here with the three phases joined at the end. Checked it three times, it's right, ready for casting. Just mixing up some resin. Putting talcum powder in it as well to fill it out a bit and to help conduct heat. Not going to be too much filming with this because I need to uh, really concentrate. Yeah. I haven't got enough. It's going to be very close, that's for sure. Uh, didn't really go to plan. I think I've managed to save it. Air bubbles trapped under here. Get out of there. Yeah, I think I just need to get the thing on now and stop messing about. Because um, yeah, I've had a, I haven't managed to get these up to the surface. They were meant to go through the top and bolt down, so they didn't get filled with resin. But that hasn't happened. But it doesn't matter. The metal's still there. I can still tap into it. It's not going to be an issue. So I just need to get the top on before this sets up too much. Just about had enough. Getting the top on. Didn't quite go to plan, but I reckon we're all right. I hung about for a bit trying to get all the bubbles out, but... Don't know how much I succeeded through that. We're getting a bit of squeeze out. So... We might. Just about done it. Time to demold the stator, and as you can see, she won't come out. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit annoying. Normally, or last time I did this, I used uh, stuff called melanine. It's um, like furniture board, and it's got like a really hard, white, perfectly smooth, durable surface to it. And my plan was to get that in 18 millimeter, and which is the size I needed and make all this out of that. But when I went to go and get some, they didn't have any. They had it in 12 mil, but nothing in 18. So I got this uh, particle board with the same white facing, which I thought was like a white face, but it's not. It's basically just painted on. And that's why it's all got stuck. But there's no big deal, because I shall get it off. And it will be fine. It's all getting painted anyway. You see, there's me resin, and there's just the paint from the particle board. It looks like what we got on the inside is not too bad. Got a couple of voids, I must have had some big air bubbles. Um, so I've got a little couple of repairs to do. So I should have slowed down with it really. I was a bit panicked because you've got to get it out of the pot. And it's, it starts trying to catch fire on you if you're not careful. So I was a bit worried about that. But I should have taken a bit more time to agitate it. And, Get the bubbles out, but 
I can fix that. No problem. But yeah, on the sides and that actually looks quite good. I think we can rescue it. Yep. See where it was stuck to the shiny tape, but no problems getting it off. It's just that stupid particle board or what is it? Chipboard. Yeah, not even chipboard. What is it? I can't think of the name. But yeah. But I'll get it. We'll rescue it. This hasn't come out too bad in the end. It's alright, isn't it? It's actually nice and flat. I've got a few air pockets, but I shall fill them in before I paint it. I can see the coils and they line up well. So if I line up, say, the earth, earth colour, not actually earth, line them up to the middle like that. See, they line up. Yeah, so I'm pleased with that, and that one will line up there. So, yeah, pleased with that. Yeah, came up well. My connections aren't too far away from the surface, so I'm going to get to them. I'm going to end mill in nice and tidy, and I'll be able to get to them. Yeah, sorted. Data is done. Well, just need to drill some mounting holes, but I'm going to let this set for a few more days yet. Kind of dodgy, but this is a big lever. I've got quite a lot of control, um, and the stop button's there. I'm ready to hit it. So can't get it on the lathe this big unless I take the gap out. I don't really want to do that. So we'll go with this. So we're, we're doing. It's getting a bit dodgy with the with the end mill because it'll grab, uh, but a little burr shouldn't grab so much. And even if it did, it'll it'll break or bend. So we'll do it like this now. I was uh, working on this video for so long, over the course of about six months, that I ended up uh, losing some of the footage of uh, plasma cutting. So I, uh, I plasma cut these parts out on my uh, Extreme CNC plasma table, um, and these are the brackets that hold on the stator.
So the magnet's on, so the north south, I know my hand right now, I've got, made a few mistakes, but it's north south, north south, all the way around, um, opposing, yeah, let that dry, clean it up, give it another coat of paint, and uh, do the other side. It's got ahead of myself, I needed to weld these on, um, there's a bit of a pain now, but we'll be alright, I can still get in there, just be careful not to get it too hot, yeah, weld that on. Welded the middle in and it's working. As you can see, the little shavings are dancing around as they're supposed to. Working their way around. It's quite an image of how the other flux works from the magnets. And I'm getting a little bit of voltage too. It's just between phases. Between two of the phases there. Let's see what we get. It's a bit warm. Yeah, see we're making voltage there. So that 20 volts. Good. The uh, glue has dried, it's had a bit of a coat of paint, it's going to need more painting and stuff, it'll have to come apart, but it's had a good coat, it needs a bit of a clean up with these raised bits, but I'm going to do a test fit, and um, still needs mounting as well, nowhere near finished, but we'll do a test fit and check what voltages we get. Right. Let's find the mark, there it is, and then this one's got a mark on it as well. There it is, so it should be like that. That's it, there it's lining up. Right, so my uh, calculations have worked well. So look at the output, look, six volts, 10, 12, 13, there we go. It's about 20 there, oh, geese are about, it's 22, so now we are charging, about now, this would now charge my batteries, and we're only at about 60 RPM, so that's great, so it's going to be much slower than my other one, I'm pleased with that, that is really good, it's exactly what I wanted, so we're charging now, really what, this has got some serious torque, look, if we give it a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit like that. Watch this, if I short out these terminals, look at the torque this thing's got ready, and <laughs> moves itself, and it weighs about 30 kilos. Let's try again, but so this is shorting out to stop it, ready, and <laughs> this is a beast. Right, so I'm happy that this is all working electrically. Sorry, that's probably a big bang, but electrically it's all working right. It's just a bit of tidy up and paint to do, but now I need to start working on mounting it and stuff, but it's so heavy, it's such a beast this thing, that I've got to take it apart to do that, so that's the next job. There we go. I did film cutting all this out and designing it all, but uh, lost the footage unfortunately. It's a fairly basic shape, so I'm going to get this cleaned up a bit. And then uh, we need to make a big contraption on the back to mount it all.
So I've got this uh, hub. This is on my Land Rover. All these bolts are sheared off in it. So uh, I think I can make it work for this wind turbine because it's already got all the tapers and everything for some taper roller bearings. So that will be nice for it to spin on. So if I can make this as a mount that mounts onto the pole and it spins, it's got a slip ring and everything, it'll be a much better system. But I'm going to try and uh, see if I can use this. made this part I only had a piece of tube uh, I didn't have a piece of steel long enough to um, to make you know to turn it down as you as you really should do so I welded this extra material on there turned it back so this is gonna slide in there like that and we've got a taper roller bearing on the other side as well in there hang on so yeah we've got a taper roller in there as well There we go, and then that big nut clamps it on, and then we've got a mounting point for a, a spinning mount for the for the wind turbine. Let's put this nut back on here. Might still modify this because at the moment the seal doesn't fit, so I might need to weld a bit more on there so the seal fits onto it. But we'll see about. That. So I did end up uh, extending that shaft, uh, sorry, that area so I can mount the seal in there. Um, so I've put in some copper grease, because that's the only grease I had. And I'll put that seal on there. Oh, did I do that a bit tight? Oh no, perfect. Perfect. Knock that in. Something. Could have gone and purchased like a stub axle or something it would have done a similar job but this is all stuff i had so now we've got a nice rotating point so now i can mount that to the mast and got our rotator on top all right that's welded on Spins well, just hitting the bench, that's why it didn't sound great, but welded on and rotates well. So I'm at the point now where I need to take the old one down and copy some stuff off it, so I don't have to work it all out again. Let's go and do that.
go, that works all right. Got it propped up. It's pretty safe, it's not that heavy, so you're all right. The new one's gonna be heavy though. Remake that. I'm not going to take parts off this because I want to keep it, but um, I am going to uh, use its coffee because this one works fine. So there's a bit of corrosion starting in here. Still all right though. Surprising. Well, it's a good job of taking it down, but it's uh, it's got a decent sized crack in it. So it's come started at the the bolt hole which way you'd expect it to start I suppose but uh, yeah it's cracked I've got some good use out of it though and uh, it's probably still repairable it hasn't duffed the connections because it's um it's still working so it is fixable so yeah uh, a friend of mine is uh, probably gonna have this it'll probably do a really nice job of doing it up because he's a uh, well Raf the guy who's on helps me with the uh, hydro stuff I think he might end up having this if he wants it. There's the blades off. Hey everyone, it's a new day. We're getting somewhere with the wind turbine now. So uh, it's rotating around on its, uh, on its bearing. It's got its offset angle, so when the wind hits, it's trying to turn it out of the wind. And the tail, which is offset at an angle here, keeps it in line. So the forces on the tail keep it straight. Wind's constantly trying to push it around its axis, like that. But the tail keeps it straight. Until the wind gets too powerful and the tail can't hold it and it will rotate out of the wind and the tail will come to the side and it furls, it's called furling, it's a protection mechanism to stop it from, uh, from uh, destroying itself and so that's why it's offset like that, so it's tr always trying to rotate out, tail keeps it in line until a certain point, once the wind overcomes the tail, there's too much force on here, it rotates out the wind and the size of the tail dictates when that happens. So yeah, but I'm pleased with that. That's a nice job, and this is going to be much stronger than the other one. So, uh, so then I'm going to carry on. We'll keep making this. Well, it's working on the uh, furling tail now. So uh, the tail will be welded on here, and as this rotates out of the wind, the tail will swing round and come out of the. Uh, basically twist the turbine out of the wind so if you imagine the tail's there it will rotate around like that out of the wind so we'll start making the tail now so yeah it's just a slot cut out of a piece of old scaffold tube it's pretty good fit on there about right that is we don't want it too tight but we also don't want it too loose just heard a big roar at the door oh there she is there's the big roar that I heard Hello princess, hello, Oh, aren't you lovely, say hello to your fans, oh, you gonna come help me in the workshop. Um, the other thing to note, if anyone's actually using this as a guide on, to make one of these things, is the uh, turbine sits backwards a little bit, slight angle. Not actually sure too much why, I just know that you get a slightly better efficiency if they're slightly slanted backwards. As you can see it sits back a little bit. So there's the tail, I've gone with a plywood, um, what would you call that? 
tail plate, tail fin, um, because when I change the blade size, I'll have to make that bigger. So if I make it out of metal, I'm gonna have to redo it. So it's just a plywood one for now of the right size for those blades. That's that done. So now I'm going to weld a tube on the bottom of uh, our flange plate that I just made, and then that goes onto the uh, turbine's mast, so it's removable. But we're on a nice bearing, sealed bearing, taper rollers. It's going to be really nice that. that we just made that's our part that attached to the mast that hole we bored out is the size of the mast pole so that gets work that locates in that center hole we've put a little uh, bit of a recess in it to get plenty of weld in there because this obviously needs to be really strong and then so that will slide on the pole and fit on the pole with two bolts so weld that on next it's a bit tight where I've drilled the holes and there's a burr on the back should be alright It's really heavy. Right, gonna get the uh, wind turbine ball put together today. I've just put the first magnet rotor on. It was absolutely chucking it down. The weather's pretty brutal, it's very windy. And um, yeah, so it might be a bit of a challenging day for filming. But uh, we'll do our best and we'll try and get it up today. Maybe tomorrow, we'll see quite a bit to do still. All right, so I've got the uh, first magnet rotor on, as you can see. Now I'm gonna get the stator on top. Very, getting very heavy. The total weight is about 80 kilos once it's all assembled.
So yeah, that plate we just cut out, that's going to be um, spacer, so you can get to all the bolts that have to stick out under there. And then that's going to be welded to there on those, and then the blades will come and bolt down to these. And that will turn the rotor. So it's got a weld coat of paint on everything, because uh, I've got to weld a little pot, spot, but I'll just uh, take a bit of the paint off where I need to weld it. I won't be able to get in here with the brush. Ready to mount the, uh, the old blades. This turbine's been designed around bigger blades. These are 1.5 meter blades. I've designed this around 2.2 meter blades. Um, so it's not going to be running at the most efficient, but it's still, it still going to do a kilowatt, you know, normal winds, which is significant. But when we put 2.2 uh, meter blades on, we'll be up to well over two kilowatt on it and, you know, rated and, you know, probably peaking at sort of four kilowatts enormous amounts of energy but for now we just want to put this back up and test that all the stator and all the uh, technical gubbins is working all right and then if it is we can improve the blades from there got quite a uh, quite an interesting problem to deal with today so I don't know if I'm going to be able to put this up because it's currently windy windy enough to make this do a kilowatt um, it's also been raining all night and wet so the hydro is going at full tilt and we've got four kilowatts of solar coming in and I actually don't have anywhere to put the energy if I was to turn on everything I've got that the inverter everything the inverter could do I still would have more energy than I can use. So unless I actually actively switch the solar off, there'd be nowhere to put this power. So I need to address that situation before I put it up really. There's just too much energy coming in. Right. I need some steps, are you okay then? Right, I've got the, uh, got the blades mounted. I'm having a bit of a hard time filming today because it's so windy and it's too windy for me to put this up unfortunately but it's all mounted it's all together I'm just gonna spin it round and get the tail on and uh, then it's ready to go up oh and fit the wires So just do a final nut and bolt check because I know some of these came loose during installation and then uh, we shall put it up. The only thing I'm worried about with it is potentially this pole. I have beefed it up, I've put another scaffold tube over it. Um, so yeah, we'll see. One thing I can absolutely guarantee you about wind turbines is this going to be coming back down again. Because the two things they love to do is make way more power than you ever need and break. That's their two favourite things in the world. So I've run out of uh, these 16mm nuts, so I'm just going to put two lock nuts on, one each side opposing each other. That'll just be security, so we definitely know that those two won't come out. So, and it'd be visually um, visible from you know underneath so I'll be able to see if any have rattled out but as long as we've got two lock nuts on there it's definitely not going to fail I just thought I'd address something I know a lot of people are going to ask about because it's something that I was a bit confused about when I first started messing with wind turbines is um, how do you stop the wires twisting up 
Um, so there's two options. There's using a slip ring, which uh, I'd thought about doing on this, but they're not really the best thing to be have in exposed environments, really. You know, it's very, they're a very critical element and it will break the wind turbine if it fails. And you know, they're set out in the elements, unless you put it in a really big encased surrounding and stuff, it's gonna fail. Um, so the other option is to just let the wires twist. Because as the wind turbine faces into the wind, most of the time it's gonna just, it's just gonna do that. It's just gonna turn 180. Because most of the time the wind comes in the same direction. On the odd time that it does change direction, and say you get a northerly wind or whatever, it puts a twist in the wire. And at some point, the wind will change back again and it won't necessarily continue around back on the same route it had it probably most of the time about 50 percent of the time it will but 50 percent of the time it will go back the other direction and take the twist out again but overall you don't tend to find that you get that many twists sorry about the wind very windy today but you don't seem to find that you end up getting that many twists in it i think i've only taken about three twists out since i've been messing with wind so yeah, you don't have to worry about it too much. Oh, it's scary, 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 scary. Right, the winch has got stuck on something. Right, hang on then. Right, the winch cables got stuck on the uh, on the thing, so we use the tractor. There we go. That's freed it. It's kind of scary, this. <laughs> All right, here we go. A little tiny bit more. There's not a huge amount of force on it anymore. Should unfold soon. There we go. It's not a huge amount of wind at the minute. Right, it needs to come a little tiny bit further. there and I just got to bolt it down so there's the turbine spinning so it's currently directly connected to the batteries which is why it's spinning so slow um, there's not a lot of wind out but because it's directly connected to the batteries it's just spinning at a very slow uh, in inefficient speed for this turbine the way I built it so the next thing we do is make a controller that well we're going to connect it to a controller and then make a dump load controller um, that goes with the controller so it'll run faster higher voltage and more efficient <clears throat> and uh, so it's going to be running at about 100 volts once it's done but yeah i think it looks really good i'm really pleased with it the only thing i'm slightly concerned about is the um is the flex in that pole that it's mounted to i think it could probably do with going a little bit bigger than that but we'll see how it gets on um, so yeah, let's uh, get to work making a controller for it. All right, hey everyone, new day. So today's plan is to try and get the controller made for the wind turbine. So before my old iterations of the wind turbine have been um, just directly connected to the batteries, which means the wind turbine speed is connected to the battery voltage, which means it doesn't run that efficiently. It'll only run efficiency, efficiently at one wind speed, which isn't ideal. MPPT is a much better way to go with it, but then you've got issues with uh, not being able to dump load the turbine. Once the batteries are full, nowhere for the energy to go, and therefore that can be problematic. So for this wind turbine, I'm making a special controller for it to, uh, to my own design. So I'll show you that today. So the wind turbine's sitting up there nicely. It's uh, obviously a very calm day today 
but uh, it turns in the breeze really well. It's currently locked off to a dump load. So uh, let's go make a control of it. So you will have to excuse the ridiculously messy bench. It's what happens when you're experimenting with stuff. So I've got a controller plan for those that are interested. I'll quickly run for it. You have to excuse my ridiculous diagram. But right, how do we start with this? Okay, midnight classic charge controller can do MPPT for wind, but it won't uh, dump load like that without something else attached to it to help it along its way. So once the batteries get full, this won't have anywhere to put the power. But it does have some auxiliary outputs that are designed to control a wind turbine. So auxiliary two, um, that's going to put output a PWM signal to um, tell a solid state relay to start putting power through a dump load. Okay. Um, so that's ba the basic of how it's working. It's going to send PWM, solid state relay will switch a dump load on and off once the batteries get full. Um, and then there's another auxiliary output, auxiliary one. Auxiliary one is going to keep a uh, relay open, specifically this big relay, chunky spring return relay. Um, that's going to hold a relay open. Um, so if all power is lost, charge controller frazzles or something goes wrong, it will drop the relay, which will trigger the solid state relay, which will then trigger the dump load uh, and break the turbine. Not break it, but put the brakes on the turbine. So that's basically the wiring diagram after I've uh, been messing around. So we're going to make this, this. I think we're getting somewhere with this. So just run you through it quickly. Um, this is a stop switch. It's got the three cores from the three phase going into it and then they just bridge together. So it's using that as a brake. That just shorts all three terminals together. Uh, on here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's that big relay, <clears throat> that big um, beefy relay. It doesn't need to be big and beefy. It's just what I've got. This is a DC solid state relay and the two tails that come out of it go to a heating element two and a half kilowatt heating element. Um, <clears throat> okay, so there's two auxiliary outputs on this charge controller, which is these two, which is these two here. Uh, what's gonna happen is auxiliary one, I'm gonna program to hold this relay open, which is currently what's happening now. I'm putting, I'm imitating auxiliary one holding this relay open. And then if that relay drops out, because auxiliary one has lost power uh, because the charge controller is broken or something's happened to the charge controller, then that relay will return because it's normally closed and it will go to open. So we we'll imitate that now and it will short the turbine out to the heater. So that should happen if we go like this. So that's now all the wind turbine power is now going to the heater. Okay, so that works. And then auxiliary two is going to output a PWM signal to this. So if we uh, have auxiliary one held open like it's supposed to be, so we'll put that back in there. I'm just using these uh, drill batteries. So that's the uh, relay back open again. So now I need to imitate putting auxiliary one down this while this is held open when auxiliary one oh that popped out when auxiliary one uh, sorry auxiliary two is feeding a pwm signal down here we should trigger this relay uh, this solid state relay as well so let me get another battery so what you should see now is when i connect these two together this light should come on <clears throat> and we should hear if i rest them in there don't know if it would be a good enough connection, but it might be. We should hear the buzzer go off because it should make that connection. So let's give that a try now. And I've got two diodes between these so we can't back feed anything into the controller. So let's see here. Here we go. Put that in there. There we go. Works. So with the PWM, it'll be, it'll be basically going like that really quickly, you know, turning it on and off and sending little bits of current into it is a PWM signal. It would just be sending little pulses into the heater. 
But that is actually working. I'm pleased with that. And then we lose all power, something goes catastrophically wrong, relay trips out, charge controller goes off, we lose all power. The battery voltage then trips that. Sorted. So yeah, that is actually working. So yeah, in here, I am tidy these up now, I know it's working, but there's a diode between there. These aren't carrying any power, they're just signal cables. Well, they are carrying power, 12 volts, but 12 volt signals. And uh, so there's little uh, diodes in there just to stop that back feeding. So I'm gonna cover them up and then we'll go and get this fitted and wired in. Right, I've just fitted the controller. Uh, wind's picked up a bit, which is handy. Uh, it's not the best wind, it's a bit gusty and a bit turbulent. When you run a wind turbine, you start to see that um, wind isn't all equal. When you've got a really steady, constant, direct wind, you know, you get a lot more power, but we've got some wind to test it with and it's all working really well. So I'll take it in the shed and I'll show you it working. In the power shed, seen this before. Uh, solar, solar, hydro, hydro controller. Um, so currently we've got about 350 watts of uh, hydro coming in, hardly any solar because it's miserable out. Um, so here's the panel, fitted it to the wall, I made it so it just fits next to it. Something I did uh, off camera was I made this uh, heater, um, I didn't make the heater, I bought the heater but I made a guard for it, uh, like a heat shield. Um, and yeah, it's all working, so power comes in. I'll just go over it again quickly because some people will be interested. If you're not interested, just skip this bit. But uh, power comes in to a bridge rectifier, uh, which is here. It then goes to the charge controller, MPPT, where it decides the best voltage for it and sets the turbine to the best voltage for that. We've just done a kilowatt there. That's cool. Um, once the batteries are full, it's going to trigger a PWM signal, which is going to go to this solid state relay and start sending pulses of electricity to the heater to load the turbine. If the uh, power's lost and you know all th everything's lost, I have a cable coming from the battery voltage here, going via auxiliary one, which is held open, holding a relay open. Um, holding that relay open is um, keeping everything on. If that drops out, it will turn everything off, and because everything's off, it will then divert the power into the heater. That's it. <laughs> Sorry, trying to explain that is quite difficult. Yeah, show you what power. Oh yeah, one more thing. I've also got three tails coming off of the uh, wind turbine because I can trigger a brake as well. If I turn that the terminals are shorted out so it puts the brake on and because the uh, wind turbine's got such small blades comparative to how big the rotor is it will actually hold it unlike on a lot of the turbines the rotor won't hold the blades so this will actually if I trigger that it will actually stop the turbine right let's test auxiliary one now so if I uh, imitate losing auxiliary one so that's charge controller failure so if I turn auxiliary one uh, off so now you heard that click, so now auxiliary one is off, so now we've dumped all of the power via the solid state relay, which is, you see the light on the, hang on, yeah, which is the light on the solid state relay there, and now all of the power is being dumped into the heating coil, just there. So if I engage auxiliary one again, put it to manual on, so now we're sending power back to the controller. Um, what it won't do though is it won't uh, it won't allow the voltage to get too high as it's doing that. You see, we, it, it did that in a gust. So, see now we've got 700 watts going into the batteries. So that's working perfect. 800, 900 watts going into the batteries there, and this is the battery voltage here. So let's imitate the battery voltage gets too high now, and there's nowhere for the power to go. So we shall pretend that that's what's happening. So if I go into the menu, and I go to the charge volts, and I lower this so to pretend like our batteries are full, I'll go down to the minimum, which is 26.8 usually. There you go, that'll do, that should put us there now. So right, I've just imitated the um, the, the battery is now full, so now any power off the turbine, you see auxiliary 2 is flashing up. That's because auxiliary 2 is giving us a PWM um, signal, 
and um, and is sending pulses to the solid state. So now the solid state relay is pulsing and it's sending power to the heating element which is there and as we get gusts that element will heat up so it's 30, 31 if we get a really big gust a lot of heat. Yeah the whole heat is just a 2.5 kilowatt heater and it's up to 40 degrees so yeah all that power is getting pushed into there Right, so now if I change that back, so we'll change our charge settings to something that's actually correct, which is, we'll go with 28, it's all oh, too high, too high. 28.8 is okay for this, for my batteries. Now we're gonna start taking power. It's not gonna allow this turbine to get a higher voltage than that because that's what I've set it to not allow it to. So it's still dumping because it can't control it at the moment. Once it slows down a bit, it'll come out of resting and start putting some charge in the batteries. But at the moment it just can't, uh, it can't take a break from it at the moment. See, it's too risky to take a break. So once, there you go. Once it had a little moment to sort it out, it's back into sending power to the batteries now. So now we're back sending power to the batteries. If the battery voltage gets up to that voltage we set, it will trigger auxiliary two, solid state relay kick in and we'll start heating that heater up again. So the uh, weak point in this system is that solid state relay. Um, not sure what to do about that. I might try and put in two in parallel or something to if one goes, another one's still there or something like that. But that's definitely the weakness in it. So if that goes, we still can do MPPT in the batteries, but if the batteries then get full, we'll have a problem. Um, if I didn't notice it in time. So that's the weak point in this system. So uh, that would be a little update to try and fix that. You see we're doing pretty well on the power output. So that's what I mean by changing direction a lot. So yeah, it's moving all over the place. That's not because it's furling out the wind. It's just the wind's all over the place. Look, it's very turbulent. So that's why the uh, power's going up and down so much. Right, it is the next day and uh, as you can see the wind has really died down a lot, unfortunately. It has been going overnight, but uh, not that much. Um, so let's have a look. Oh, hang on, where are we? Let's go menu. Let's have a look at the logs. Logs. So we've had 4.7 kilowatt hours so far since we, uh, since we installed it, which was uh, just yesterday. We've got this on just yesterday. So yeah, not too bad, but um, like I say, the wind died down. So yeah, having real trouble in here with um, interference on the microphone. That's why I'm listening to myself here as I speak to check that it's working right. Yeah, it's very typical of making videos that uh, when you want to do something, it's say way too windy, and now I want the wind, the wind stopped. <laughs> it's very typical, but never mind. I'll make a short video when we've got plenty of wind and we'll demonstrate the power output, but you know, it's doing a kilowatt in small gusts, so it's gonna get right up to 1.7 kilowatts, which is the max the charge controller can do. So yeah, really pleased how it turned out. Everything's all gone to plan. It's been filmed over a long period of time, this, so it was quite hard to get the video to work out right, but I'm happy with it. I know it's long, but this is as short as I can make it with getting all the information I needed in it. So yeah, for those um, people that um, aren't interested in the videos and things coming up, that's the end of this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, but um, if you want to stick around for a minute, we'll have a chat about what I've got planned and what's coming up. So this year's really been about uh, making power. I've done the solar system here and rewired this uh, with the wind turbine now. And I've been doing hydroelectric development of stuff and uh, making a hydroelectric system for someone else. Um, and I've really enjoyed that. I really like doing that. But the, uh, we really need to develop this piece of land a bit more. We need a barn a lot more than we need more power. We've got so much power now that yeah a barn is way more useful to us than more power so the power stuff's going to mostly come to an end for a bit and then we're going to move on to uh, building ourselves a barn so i'm going to be starting a foundation and milling and stuff for it fairly soon but the main bulk of it start in the spring i also need to finish the workshop because that's a lot to do still on there little odd jobs and things uh, so yeah we're going to move away from, we're going to have probably a few more videos in the winter of doing the technical hydro stuff. But then after that we're going to start moving away from the power stuff a little bit and uh, concentrating on building again. Um, so yeah, um, that's what's coming up. So hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.